G'day and welcome to Walking Through Worlds. And today I'm really pleased to have a Melbourne guest. Uh, and I'm from Brisbane, um, acknowledging all the traditional custodians of the land I'm doing this recording here, particularly the Turrbal and the Yuggera people of the land. And I pay respects to all our elders, past and present, and all those elders from all the different countries that are joining on this land now today. Um, and we pay the deepest respects to Australian Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people. And today my guest is Uncle Shane Charles. Now he's currently um, the in-house cultural residency with Initiatives of Change, Initiatives of Change, which is IOFC. And we'll talk about that as well. Um, welcome Shane and tell us a little about your mob and where you're from. Oh, thanks, uh, Greg. Was, <laughs> Give us some background. Yeah, it's great to be on. And I guess, you know, part of protocols, I, I must pay my respects to my elders, uh, past, present and emerging leaders. And I'd like to extend that respect to all country, country men and women uh, listening to this broadcast. Um, yeah, myself, I'm a Yoda Yoda man. Uh, I'm also, you know, uh, through the Moira, the Moira tribe. Um, and I'm also connected to Wurundjeri, which is the Melbourne area through the Woiwurrung language uh, group. And, and blessed enough, I guess, to also be a part of the south side of the river, which is the Banwurrung or Bonarong, um, peoples as well. So, you know, born and bred from Shepparton, uh, coming out of, of Cumberland Gunja, you see the Sapphires uh, movie, that's all about my family and, mm. uh, yeah, great memories of as a young boy listening to our, our beautiful, you know, Aboriginal choir, Cumberland choir, which has became pretty famous. So I guess, yeah, I, I guess my my background is is you know uh, I've been blessed enough to have elders, um, you know, with the likes of Uncle William Cooper and Uncle Doug Nichols and Nanny Marge Tucker, which is the photo which has been connected to Arma, the the place that I'm residency at the moment. But yes. Uh, Born a red shepherd, and my family was actually the last family to move off the riverbank after um, the walk off in '39 of Cameron Gunja, and they moved to Dash's Paddock, which is between Merton and Shepparton. And um, yeah, so fond memories of, of country, but uh, you know, it's 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 an opportunity, I guess, to share this amazing culture and knowledge that we have of country. Mm. So and yeah, that, I so guess that, that's a little bit about. So explain about armor. Well, yeah. Oh, armor. Yes. Well, that was a uh, you know, um, a higher power. I think was at stake there because I came to yeah. armor for uh, to to play a, a didgeridoo gig with, uh, and I've been involved with the Jewish community and the Night of the Broken Glass performances. So uh, they had one here at armor, and I knew nothing about armor or who it was. I just thought it was a you know facility that they hired out, and then. Mm. I'm meeting uh, the CEO, Marg and Sarah, who's uh, the lead facilitator uh, for Armour, um, and having a conversation and had a, an amazing uh, conversation about family had been connected here for a long time, so with the likes of Annie Marge Tucker, who actually mm. used to live here. So, yeah, I'm sort of following so on. So where's it based? Where is it in what suburb? It's in Turak. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> you know, Amazing. I, I think most uh, the, I've found out more recently that I think I'm, I'm the only brother in Turak. But anyway, <laughs> 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 might, might be part of a bigger plan, Greg. Don't you think? <laughs> but yeah, oh, so wow. I've, I've connected with Arma, which is you know uh, initiatives, of, uh, you know, global initiatives of change, but also they originated out of moral rearmament, and, and uh, I think you know. Connected to the union and wharfy movement, I guess, you know, we had some staunch supporters uh, for Aboriginal people even back in in the days. So, you know, they've been around a long time and they're global, obviously, but, but also, you know, how my families and, you know, elders that I grew up with were, you know, have been a part of this facility and a part of the journey. So I guess my, yeah, that, that's how I sort of came to be here. And, mm. and out of that, you know, we've, we've had some amazing conversations and you know when I got here I thought you know I feel like I've been here before I had this sense mm. of belonging but I, yes. that, that was what I guess family had paved out you know uh, for me 
uh, for those that have gone. So, yeah, it's... it's and it's, it's a peace-building and trust network, as we've dealt with when we interviewed Margaret a couple of episodes yes. ago. Mm-hmm. You know, we sort of touched on its work that it does. And mm. I, for one, hadn't heard of the organisation until I met Barbara up in Brisbane. And, um, you know, then I read a lot about the organisation. I thought, gee, this really resonates. It's yeah. a, It's one of those sort of silent active workers chipping away in the background educating connecting um doing a lot of great work so good on you for finding your way there yeah oh, and doing the work yeah. and we're going to talk about some of the work yeah, you're doing you know sure. i really want to talk and let the listeners know um a little bit about this the eight modules of training that you've been doing at arma and you've been doing it online and i'm assuming that this will be a regular thing as well next year Absolutely, yes. It's you know we we wanted to put a bit of rubber on the road, so to speak, Greg. To you know yes. to test to test the program. It's a program that came out of America, but I guess yep. you know for me, I'm currifying it or indigenousifying it, finding the yes. program and and you know bringing in key key speakers and and uh, you know and it's about having the conversation and you know in the context of Victoria, Greg, where we're down the path of treaty and truth telling. So you know it's that opportunity mm. to. You know, tell it, you know, through both lenses, through, you know, Aboriginal eyes and, the, you know, a cultural lens as well as, you know, th- through, you know, this contemporary, um, you know, uh, life that we have. And, you know, a lot of those things that, that need support in a lot of communities that need support. And I was, I was very impressed with some of the work they've done to date and the reach mm. that they have is amazing, you know, supporting the Uluru Statement. Uh, you know, in terms of having a voice in the constitution, um, yes. you know, is, is, is something that is, you know, I'm very passionate about. And, and, you know, we're finding there's a big shift, Greg, in this country, I think. Yes. And, and COVID has really, you know, uh, maybe, um, you know, given people the opportunity, I guess, to, you know, to sit with themselves and families and all those sorts of things. I sort of call it a, you know, modern day a colonisation, mate. We've been there before. <laughs> they lock you yeah. up and, you know, you take a what you can't go here and you can't see family and all those sorts of things. It's sort of a little bit familiar, but like how, you know, yeah, there, there's a big shift in, in this state. And, you know, a lot more people are wanting to learn more about, you know, Aboriginal culture because... It is the oldest living culture on the planet, you know, and that's something I think that, that, you know, everyday Australians have been robbed of this beautiful knowledge and, and this ancient, you know, history and, and, you know, the pedagogy on how we learn as Aboriginal people and how country is, is, you know, vital. Well, even um, on that so, pedagogy, you know, mm. to hear, to hear the word pedagogy coming out of a First Nations person's mouth. Is, um, is is wonderful to a degree because for a lot of listeners they probably don't even know what the word means it's mm. it's a very uh, educators sort of word isn't it you know from yeah. a, the, yeah. the the institution I think I heard once that pedagogy is the science of teaching is that right something like that well is yeah that partly there are so you know you look at as an example under the you know the yorta yorta pedagogy there's you know up to eight ways and more of learning and yeah. how we use, you know, that whole transfer of knowledge, right, in the ways that we did as Aboriginal people, you know, through story, through dance, you know, with that story goes that dance, you dance the same story, you know, you sing the same story, you know, you tell the same story, you paint the same story. So, you know, this whole beautiful, you know, lens of this rich culture that's not only mine and ours as Aboriginal people it's, it's mm. everybody's to enjoy and share and learn because there's so much you can you know you can get from that and out of a session last night we had the first didgeridoo or yiraki healing uh session and people were amazed at how much you know the, the vibration that comes out and how it tuned you know their spirit and how it raised their energy you know and i said that's what i feel when i go in country <laughs> mm, <laughs> mm. my grandmother taught me that that river flows from my veins you yes. Know, that, that, yes. That, that's the pull back to country. I have to come and recharge. You know, and then the smoking ceremony cleanses my spirit. You know, and then and just being there. So yeah, many many hours, I guess, Greg, of uh, as a young boy, being sat on the riverbank and and asked what I see constantly, and 
you know, being able to sit there and have no words uh, for a couple mm. of hours, but walk away feeling you've I've learned so much, you know. So that that connectedness, I think. And you know, we live a busy life in in this world, Greg, and that's the problem. I think it's, you know, we don't take that time out to connect and and just to be, you know. And and I guess I these, think that's mm, biggest yeah, learnings, isn't it? That biggest is biggest learnings it? from from the yeah. Western civilization who are always in their head. You know, um, First Nations and Indigenous people are so connected to, um, well, traditionally connected to country and connected to land. And a lot of them are finding their way back and then sharing that mm. that knowledge with people to realise there's a better way to live. Oh, totally. This actually was yeah. a, mm. it is a, yeah. a better way to connect. Yeah. And, you know, and heal, I, yeah. and I guess, you know, us as Aboriginal people and our knowledge is, you know, for too long has been dismissed. You know, um, yes. you know, treated as dumb, primitive natives who don't know anything, but yet there's a mountain. You know, my grandmother taught me this This country tells you what's happening. Yeah. You know, it tells you what's going on. The flora and fauna tell you what's going on and, and this connect. And even more recently, Greg, that they've found that, you know, obviously through the science lens where they have to understand it, mm. that, you know, being out on country and outdoors recharges your immune system. Yeah. So it's That's like, right. and you know, I'm thinking, well, yeah, about time you catch up, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> in, in how we, you know, and how we be and yeah. how we are with country and that, you know, it's vital, if, you know, but also too, Greg, as, as you know, uh, a few cultures around the world that have that spiritual connection with everything, mm. you know, and, and, and it's the sickness of country too that affects us as Aboriginal people. You know, I see yes, the river. You feel that? Oh, I do. Yes, I, yeah. I feel that. So I guess the session last night really sort of showed people that, you know, there's a whole vibration that you walk on and you walk in the footsteps of my ancestors and, it's, you know, there's a beautiful, rich culture there just waiting for you. <laughs> you know? So I've got these modules. Yes. I'm looking at these modules mm -hmm. to share what they are because I think they're worth – and what do they call it? The Turek Turek Immerse. Turek. Immersive work, Tarek, Tarek. Yeah, yeah. So Tarek um, is, is start the name, with the authentic. Yeah, is the name of the grass. Now, tell so, us about the name. Yeah, the, the Tarek is the grass that grew here. Um, mm -hmm. you know, where actually where the building uh, armor is situated, there was actually an original creek bed that ran through here and down to the river. But yeah, it was loaded with myrnong flowers and, and yam daisies and and the tussock grass, which grew along the creeks, which was, you know, vital for women for weaving. And it also helped mm. filter the water and, you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, and that's hence we sort of, I really wanted to, you know, uh, connect the program to country. You know, this is mm -hmm. a country we're on. It's, it was heavy with tuck. Tarak grass, so that's hence the program. And then, you know, Tarak uh, trust building. Program. So is there any relationship with Tarek and Turak? Well, like yeah, the... we seem to think because, you know, I guess, you know, we didn't have a written written language. Mm. So it's been written down so many different ways. Yes. You know, so you look at Yorta Yorta, it's been written, you know, eight to ten, a dozen different ways of mm. people, how they how they hear it or how they want to spell it. So, yeah. Yes, it, yes. It, it, look, I, I, I'm, I'm confident that it is, uh, you know, it, it is local. So, you know, yes. yeah, yeah, Tarek, so... Tarak, same, you know, same, same. It is. It's, well, it's got the same sort of sound, <laughs> yeah. hasn't it? Yeah, and yeah. I think that's the same of many oh, suburbs absolutely. Absolutely, that have yeah. that have come from mm. um, First Nations, and we just mm. take it for granted, mm. yes. you know, that these are Australian names, but they're not. They've been borrowed mm. from people that have been living here, you know, giving these spaces and places sort of a, a sound and a name, yeah, you yes, know, a place. Yeah. Like, mm. you know, when they said Bunya... It would have been, you know, bunyip festivals. And, yeah, oh, totally. You, you know, know. Yeah, so, you know, and, and a lot of people don't realise that, you know, we, unless it really stands out that, oh, yeah, that's got to be an Aboriginal word. <laughs> but, you know, when our... Every... Even things like Wollongong mm. or, um, you know, all these different uh, towns and cities. Mm. Yeah, 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 totally. You know, so that, that whole language, you know, and I mean, language is, is, is uh, powerful. You know, yes. language is, is power, and, and I guess you know my four years at the city of Melbourne, driving Aboriginal Melbourne was was a challenge yeah. trying to have these spaces with this beautiful narrative, and you know, peel back the city and let's see what's there, and let's have that for people to learn on, you know, the, to learn that yeah, let's put the bush tucker plants back and the medicinal plants, and you know, so people understand, um, you know, how important they are, you know, uh, 
Are they having the double signage in Victoria? Well, you know, it's, where... yeah, it's slowly bubbling away, Greg, but, you know, yes. it, it, that, that's a minefield. You have to go through two pieces of legislation, <laughs> you know. It's, oh, you know, but yeah. it should be, should be one of the easiest things we do. You know, yes, you know, there were the I challenges, agree. you know. Why do we got to jump through hoops? It's, you know, let's do it. It's, you know, it's not rocket science, people. You know, why do we have to think about it? And, you know, the challenges were, you know, for us as Aboriginal people, seeing all this, you know, these people, the Batmans and statues and everything of, of people that, you know, destructed, you know, <laughs> was the start of destruction of, of, of an ancient yes. culture and rights and all yes. those sorts of things. So, but just giving the, the city that cultural overlay. I think the more we can do that anywhere across the country, the more people learn. And, and like, the more they'll become aware of, like you said, the truth telling. Yeah, start totally. to understand yeah. what's mm. come historically. I, I, mm. I've been interviewing several historians, you know, um, and authors. Um, one in particular, Nick Brody, mm-hmm. um, who's based in Tasmania. Uh, he's from New South Wales, and one up here in Queensland called Ray Kirko. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's the Henry Reynolds and there's all the, you know, Bruce Pascoe's yeah. and all the, the, the people bringing insight. And, and a lot of what's come up is that we're almost like it's, we haven't wanted to talk about it in the mainstream. Mm. And this is, I assume, what the whole truth telling is about, getting mm. it out, talking openly about what's occurred, because without acknowledging what's occurred, we can't heal it. Is that a way you feel? For, oh, totally, for, you know, but yeah. also, you know, you've got to understand, you've got to learn that knowledge, mm. you know, because it's, it's you know, it's that foundational pillars of this country, that, that ancient knowledge. And, you know, I, I like to think that, you know, we have 90% of the country, Greg, that is for reconciliation, mm. uh, but they don't know how to go about it, you know. Now, now, talking about reconciliation, you're the, the co-chair yes. of the Victorian Reconciliation. How long have you been associated and and what's the sort of what is the the actions what what's the output of that mm. what happens what occurs well i guess you know um i'd always been involved in reconciliation from the grassroots you know right through to you know i've worked right across government mm. um you know on all levels and and you know i saw so i see so much opportunity in terms of reconciliation Right, that, you know, my, my dad said, well, you know, where's, where's mob son don't have anything to reconcile? You know, and mm. he said reconciliation is white fella business. Yeah. You know, yes. and, and yeah, well then, you know, that, that's true to a certain extent, but I see the opportunities and how, you know, um, they needed our help. You know, they need help from our, our communities, you know. Yeah, um, and I saw that yeah. word. I think we had a discussion a couple of weeks about this, you know, that mm. word. And I think even on the reconciliation side, it says, it really just means coming together. Hmm. So don't get all cooked up on the word reconciliation because that just means coming together. Hmm. It's coming together hmm. and sharing hmm. of these stories, hmm. isn't it? Yeah. It's and part it's, of the... Yeah. And that's the whole, you know, knowledge transfer. And, you know, once people learn a bit of knowledge, they start to understand Greg, you know, hmm. and, and that, you know, they may see me through that deficit lens as which was, you know, created for us and yeah. brought us all these things and taught us all this stuff uh, that we, you know, that is outside our cultural um, you know, morals and values. Mm-hmm. You get judged for it. So no, no. Take one step back. Let's let's take yep. a step back and look at country and see what it, see what I'm and my people are fighting for. Yes. You know where you see it through. You know they talk about this deep listening. I said, well, you can't have deep listening without deep feeling. Mm-hmm. You know, and getting that deep understanding. And, and the more you know, when we run a, a running cultural immersion programs, Craig, and I've been doing that with Melbourne Uni for over fifteen years, and taking mm. people out, and and you see the change, you see the penny drop, in that wow, you know, why weren't we taught about this rich, beautiful culture? You know, it, it, you know, forget all the deficit stuff. You know, that that's a whole yeah. other contemporary overlay. But also, you know, understand that and build that cultural foundation is a solid foundation of knowledge and trust and, and all those parts that make up our, our rich culture, you know, those traditional values and morals of respect and acceptance and relationships and responsibilities. So, you know, they're the four fundamental values of traditional law, Greg. So yes. when I look at, you know, and all the governments I work for, they all talk about, they have respect, they have acceptance, you know, you know, and, and they have these relationships and they have this responsibility. You know, so there's this whole opportunity through the reconciliation um, process. You know, signing yes. up, you, you you sign up, and you are committed as an organisation, yeah. as a business. You know, when you go through the four levels, 
you know, the first one is start that reflection on, well, okay, what's, what is reconciliation? What do I, yeah, well, what is that that I understand about it? You know, and then starting to build, you know, through the four levels of, uh, uh, which, you know, ends up in terms of in employment strategies and procurement strategies, you know, for, to help, you know, to, the, to engage Aboriginal, uh, businesses and communities and, you know, to provide that opportunity. And in Victoria, we have the Aboriginal, um, Aboriginal Affairs Framework. You know, when it's yeah. come back around, you know, as, as it does, you know, we're back to self-determination. What does that yeah. look like? You know, and, and how we can build that, you know, sustainability in our, in our communities and those opportunities and all those sorts of things. So it has, you know, it has, um, that commitment there. So, but you know, some of the challenges are, you know, out of the, the data, you know, we have a, what they call a workplace barometer, Greg, where the organization is, has a survey as to how they're tracking and how they're doing and, you know, mm. identifies gaps and, you know, and some of the, you know, horrific sort of data that I've, I've sort of looked at that there's a big trust gap with Aboriginal people. Like, well, where does that mm. come from? You know, it comes from the colonisation, the lens of, you know, you can't trust us. Well, we were taught by a boatload of thieves and crims, mate. So yeah, it was quite the thing right. to do. And that's, it's you true. know, and, and that, that stigma sticks in the minds yeah. and people don't even realise that. So it's yeah. challenging, you know, these sorts of the thinking of, of people. It's, it's, ta- it's challenging them to, you know, to, to go out and, and build these relationships, you know. And then, you know, the, the other, you know, thing was that, you know, the knowledge gap is huge and that's, yes. you know, the opportunity to start because when, you know, you take people out on country and when they come back, they come back with new eyes, uh, new ears, they think differently and they start to talk differently and they say, well, what can we do? What can we do? And, and in the words of one of my uncles, uh, um, you know, the spear of the pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah, but you know, it's an opportunity, Greg, and, and I see yes. the movement growing. I see, you know, through the education system, um, you know, that, you know, they're talking about, you know, how's this, Greg? They're talking about, you know, the stolen generation and, and kindergartens and that, and, you know. I mean, yes. really, what, what a way to start when you look at sitting there talking to children and, and they actually understand that. You know, that's yes. pretty creative. And they say, well, no, that's not right. I, I wouldn't feel, you know. So they connect with that. And I think, you know, this whole education and reconciliation, we're building resources and that's what it's about. You know, being, being able to help and build resources and build relationships and, you know, across communities. And I guess, you know, in Victoria, we have to look at the Victorian context of what's yes. happening. So, you know, we're uh, you know, rolling out a treaty of truth-telling pamphlets so people understand about what that is. Yes. You know, it's not about coming to take your backyard. <laughs> you know? No, no, that's right. Dispelling that's the right. What, yeah. When you're talking about um, uh, companies, uh, you know, putting in plans to do reconciliation and working uh, with um, Aboriginal people, um, all good? Yep. <laughs> Lawn knowing man. Yes. <laughs> um, I met a I met a, a, a large company, a large construction company up here um, in Queensland, and I think they operate nationally. They have a particular they signed with the Commonwealth to to make sure that their workforce was a minimum of three to four percent First Nations people. You know, to have them on board and not just to have them to tick boxes, but actually build in a process of coaching and mentoring from their own people to work with, um, you know, males or females in the company because things that, like the West, and this is what I've learned, and you can sort of unpack this even more, a lot of the things that they don't understand in a company is that things will come along that are different to the Western way of things. So, example, sorry business. You know, I discovered that when sorry business happens in a family and that what all the company sees is that, you know, Jack was here one day and yesterday and, and tomorrow he's not here. He's gone on walkabout. But in actual fact, what he's done, his family have said, we've got to go to the funeral. And that is not just a one afternoon thing at a funeral parlour. This is actually a process of time. So that's one of the things about understanding too, isn't it? In a workplace where the Western corporations have a view that, you know, you can have 
half a day off to go and visit your grand's funeral, you know, oh, you, actually, you could have the day off. But in Aboriginal culture and Torres Strait culture, there's a whole there's a whole process, isn't there, and protocol within the family to be present for for a time. Mm. You know, yes, it's yes. not just a day. You know, mm. and that that's where a lot of companies don't have that process in place. And this corporation, the construction company, said they do. They actually have another person that steps in to the role to backfill while the other chap goes off. And it could be up to a week or two weeks mm. before he returns. But they have this system of replacing someone so that the company doesn't have that agitation, you know, and doesn't, so they have a deeper respect. They built that into the system, which I thought was absolutely fantastic when I heard that. Mm. You yeah. know, these companies that are, 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 that that to me is a deeper respect and understanding. They're not saying, oh, you need to do it our way. They're saying, we respect you have a different way to, you know, to go when someone's passed than we do. Mm. You know, we have a different process, you have a different process, so we recognise that. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right, Greg, and, you know, and that's one of the, the things within, you know, the reconciliation action plans is, is that, you know, yes. that sort of stuff's embedded. But, you know, it goes one further, not only, you know, the supporting, uh, uh, you know, supporting our, our families and how that, you know, that extension of an extended family, you know, support is vital, you know, to to be there mm. and, and to help family in whatever way you can. So, you know, but also it, it's, you know, it's about the cultural safety too. Like, give me an example, Greg, you know, and I, I'm i lucky that I've, I've probably had that solid grounding of culture and know who I am, where I come from and, and uh, uh, you know, from those you know, that had gone before me, but, you know, it, it was even challenging to walk into town hall, uh, mm. to give you an example. Yes. And, and you know, I get off the, the train and, and I get out of Flinders Street and I think, where's my culture? I don't mm. feel it. I don't, yeah, there's, you know, and there's this level of safety, Greg, that we have when we see that, you know, one of the, the things that, yes. you know, that the only thing that made me safe was actually the Aboriginal flag flying on top of town hall, <laughs> you know. Mm. But but yeah mm. yeah but but it's yes. building that that cultural overlay within the the business or the organisation where, you know, I walk into a facility and I see a poster or I see a picture of, you know, and and we look at the posters whether it's you know to do with health and wellbeing or whatever and and most times one I connect with the artwork and two I I, I probably know the the family of people that are taken in the photo. But there's all these other things that are happening mm. for me. So you know it's a part of building yes. that. But but. What it does is embeds the cultural training within the Reconciliation Action Plan as the foundation. So what I did at the City of Melbourne, mm. they didn't have one. So I built, that was the first thing I did. You know, we're, we're missing uh, the cultural training. So, you know, and then they were committed mm. to 17, every single staff member undertaking the training, you know, and to get and that And is that an ongoing process? Oh, yes. Is yes, that ongoing? Yes. Do they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and that's, you know, rolls over with new in induction and all those sorts of things. So it has that opportunity yes. to influence, you know, but, but to put everybody on the same page based around the cultural training, the understanding of Aboriginal protocols, you know, that we have, um, that, that, you know, you need to when you, when you're engaging with Aboriginal people and elders and all those sorts of things. So it, it gives that opportunity for people to learn all of this stuff. You know, and be yes. creative in that, but also, you know, provide those culturally safe pathways into into these areas. And you know, and I guess I see a lot more of our mob. You know, we're breaking out into all of these amazing areas that Aboriginal people haven't been before. And it's through this mm. reconciliation, it's through a commitment. It's, you know, we had the the slogan was, you know, it's not tick a box. <laughs> mm. and, we, and that does happen. You know, oh, well, you know, we've got our action plan, but they don't really do a lot. You know, and reconciliation isn't just a week. It's twenty four seven. It should follow you around. Yeah. You know, and it's because, ongoing. Yeah. It's, and we've got yeah. three hundred and forty seven other days of the year we can do stuff, you know, and be creative yes. and create events and you know, create opportunity and create conversations. So, you know, that's uh, but yeah, it's it's vital for, you know, to have that cultural presence within an organization or business. So yeah, stuff we connect with. You know, because I look at that painting, it doesn't just say, yeah, oh, that's an Aboriginal painting. Oh, it has depth. It goes back to all the pedagogy of how I learnt and I feel, you know, I feel, oh, there's a bit of respect here. They've got this stuff mm. around and, you know, but I guess there's a big load that falls on Aboriginal people too, 
you know, the cultural load, um, I guess, in, in trying to work, you know, and trying to drive it and, and those things. But it's something, yeah, we should be doing together. And I think the more people understand this reconciliation, I mean, well, what's next, Greg, I, I suppose, is the, <laughs> you know, the big question. What's after mm. reconciliation? That's right. We what don't is, know. What is what, next? What is next, you know, so even... Yes, it does it... Does it does it have an end? Does it have a well a phase where it morphs into something new? And it was Uluru's statement of the heart, you know, in twenty fifteen was that one of the key reasons for that to start to come about? Um, no, you know, the statement of the heart. Um, look, the statement of the heart. I, I'd probably say that it was an olive branch from government. I think, um, in terms of, of that, but like. With reconciliation, it's a part of it. So, you know, we have all these other things. So, we... cool. So, where to from now with the reconciliation? Well, you know, it's, it's, when you look at the four levels, and I guess, you know, I just want to, um, talk about that last level, and it, it's about where, you know, things are just embedded within the business, you know, where it becomes just automatic. You know, people have the had the the mm-hmm. knowledge and understanding and, and intent and, and, you know, so that, continues on but yeah then you know i guess for me my forward thinking is well okay what is after reconciliation you know we we don't know what that might look like and and even you know in victorian and victorian context you know but it's the opportunity to you know to to have that well okay yeah yeah so so you know that fourth level of of reconciliation action plans is is you know it embeds this whole the whole journey into the business and it becomes automatic and you know it, it builds that that sustainability and capacity and pathways and all those sorts of things Greg so yeah but yeah I guess you know what is what is after it and you know we, we don't know in terms of Victorian context based around treaty and you know and truth telling where you know where that's going to end up so it will be interesting um, I guess uh, moving forward, and I suppose you know reconciliation, Vic. I mean, we you know come under the reconciliation Australia, so you know maybe there's some big conversations moving forward with reconciliation Australia as to what they, mm. what they want to do, or yeah, what what is the next sort of thing, I guess. So, mm. but yeah, a huge opportunity, Greg, for people to to learn, you know, and come together and yes. and and you know stand together. And you know, the funny thing is, you know, in this country, we've been through these bushfires and floods and you know that's really the only time we stand together you know really when you really think about it but you know 2000 was the last uh you know the big march we had over the bridge you know yes. and you know next year marks the 20th year anniversary so yes you know and and you know we're thinking in the space well okay what is the opportunity here are we going to have that march again or you know, we saw it a couple of years back, even in our NAIDOC week, which is, you know, our week, I guess, to, to celebrate yes. our survival and show off what we do in our community. And, and you know, where we had over 40,000 people marched on our NAIDOC march, you know, amazing stuff. So, you know, the shift and change and people are thirsty, I think, for to learn more about it. And, and you know, I'm um, in an opportunity here to be able to yes. provide, you know, opportunities where people can connect and build those networks and relationships, and you know, on on on, um, on a on a uh, you know Victorian context of you know, let's sit down and have a real yarn, you know, let's sit down and have, you know, but also provide those opportunities mm. to you know to shine the light on how people can help. I guess, you know, and, and you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it starts with yourself, you know, you know, with reconciliation. It, yes. Uh, it, yes. It plants a seed where, you, you know, you start now, to challenge. What do you feel, talk about reconciliation, this is yeah. probably the last, the last, the last, um, the last um, question I want to ask is, is one I've asked a few of our guests over the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I won't hold I won't you anything, hold you but, anything but, but I know it's I know a very, it's very topical, topical um, conversation, uh, and, that and that is around Invasion, invasion Day, Survival, survival day, day, Australia, Australia day. day. You know, how, how do you see, see that, that playing out as well, you know, in the future? Where would you like to see it? Like if, if in a ideal world in 10 years' time, that particular date or your thoughts about another date, what, what sort of works for you? 
What's your yeah. thoughts on it? Oh, look, and I guess, you know, I've, I've grown up with, you know, this survival day and, you know, being a part of that, that you know, sovereignty movement. You know, sovereignty hasn't been ceded, you know, in this country. And, and you know, it, and, and it's, it's very challenging and very traumatic for Aboriginal people, you know, where the rest of the nation celebrates this. And, you know, we're in mourning. You know, it started off with a day in mourning. You know, and because it takes us back to all yeah, of that yeah. colonisation, all of those things that happened, you know, we're still very raw with the deep cuts that we have, you know. Our trauma can never be healed, Greg, you know, through that journey. And, and you know, we're not saying, no, don't celebrate. You can go up and celebrate, you know. Yes, yes. But, you know, it's, it's you know, mm. what's another alternative? You know, maybe there's a there's a, a day of healing that, you know, we all need after after COVID and after, you know, to, to create a new journey. And, and, you know, I guess at City of Melbourne, actually, with Lord Mayor Seller Cap, um, you know, we had a big meeting about, you know, shifting the date and obviously, you know, the commercial city wasn't, wasn't at that stage to be able to shift it, but a lot of local governments around has shifted the date, you know, it, it, yeah. it's getting traction. And so, you know, there, there's, you know, that, that, you know, it's all, it'll always be survival day. You know, for Aboriginal people, you know, when we come together and we, yeah, we celebrate our survival. But yeah, as I, I was sort of saying before, that, yes. that, you know, a lot of local governments are shifting, um, the date. You know, they're happy to. You know, they, they're committed to their local Aboriginal community. Yes. And, and you know, being closest to community too, the lo- closest government to community. Yes. So, you know, just in that very act, Greg, you know, changes a lot of things. You know, we see that respect as Aboriginal yeah, yeah. people. You know, we're not saying don't go and celebrate Australia Day, knock yourselves out. You know, but we, you know, we, we can't be a part of that. We, 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 there's too much trauma there. You know, there's too much, but you know, where's the opportunity to come together and, and heal and learn more, you know, about it and why, you know? Yes. You know, you know and there were the challenges. I'd walk into town hall and I'd see the, the figurehead statues there of the colonists and my spirit just wanted to leave my body. <laughs> You know, and then trying to, to just get a bit of traction about it. You know, let's think about it. Let's, you know, and then they've mm-hmm. got to they've got to get a consultant to to help them think about it seriously. <laughs> you know, you know, and what is the right thing to do, Greg? You know, it's it's as simple yes. as that. What is the right thing to do? You know, and we're trying to you know build mm-hmm. all of these relationships. You know, it's for Aboriginal people. We're used to this merry dance. It's one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. One step forward, two steps back. Change the government. Okay, what's, what's, you know, they take this away or they'll give this back. You know, we're mm. used to giving, being given stuff and taken away. But, you know, let, let's have this real, um, you know, conversation yes. about, well, yeah, okay, as I said, Greg, you know, we're not stopping you from celebrating it, but you just remember what you're celebrating too. You know, there's a whole education thing based around, well, you know, if I was down there celebrating, you know, the, the, the rape and pillage and plunder of, <laughs> you know, of, of, of a race of people, you know, it's, yeah, so it's, it's about, you know, shifting the thinking, educating people, giving them the opportunity to get that understanding as to why, you know, why we don't want to celebrate. Yeah. And, and, but yeah, let's create a hot, something new. You know, let's create something new where, you know, it's, yeah, you can go up on that day and, you know, let's find another day that, that, you know, we're all happy with to come together and, you know, mm. yeah. And, and it's, yes. you know, by, um, you know, and, and actually Lord Mayor defunded the, the group that were, you know, doing their reenactment and everything else and, which was good, you know, it was one little step. But, you know, they're, they're, we can do so much more, um, you know, and, and, you know, think about, you know, what, obviously what Australia Day means to you, but, you know, mm. there's a big history part yep. that comes with yep. that. You know. Look, we might, we might. Yes, yes. Shane, Shane your connection's connection lost, lost again. again. Um, I might, might yeah. um, say so thank, thank you, you for our discussion, discussion and, and thank you for the podcast, uh, joining us on Walking Through Worlds. I really, really appreciate having you on. Um, the connection was a little bit unstable, but I think our software will pick that up. So yeah. okay. it'll fix all that. Mm. Let's hope. Um, so I want to acknowledge and thank you so much for giving your time and sharing your wisdom today and, uh, and making people aware of 
um, www.iofc.org and you can have a look at Uncle Shane Charles and the work he's doing and keep an eye on some upcoming uh, programs for next year um, and also be aware of this organisation for a whole lot of reasons, you know, their peace building, their trust building, all of these things. So Uncle Shane, thank you so much for coming on board. Mm. Uh, really thanks, Greg. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Greg, for the opportunity. Right. And Buddy. cheers. We will say goodbye. All right. Okay. Thanks for all your knowledge. We will talk nice. soon. Uh, thanks, Greg. Okay. Cheers. Love your work. Mm. Um, we